Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 15. This is Fitness Podcast with Mzi and my name is Mzi Mnyazi. Please like the video, share, subscribe. Do everything, man, that makes the algorithm see the positiveness of the work that we're doing here. Welcome and today we we we're going to we're going to go a little bit deeper now we're going to talk about class structures uh, we're going to talk about class structure uh, what is a class structure and take you through some of the paces uh, in terms of let you know what is inside the class structure and then after that we are going to talk about the warm up specifically the warm up and after I'm done talking about the warm up We'll close the video, so we'll be done. It shouldn't be very long, <clears throat> but I know when we're doing these videos, you can start saying, ah, it's not going to be long, and then the next thing, you find yourself diving deep in so many things. This was a very difficult topic to pick. That is why I did not release anything for the entire week, and this episode will drop, I don't know when, maybe it will drop on a Sunday or Monday morning but it's going to drop during this weekend right let's go it depends how quickly i i i edit it i before i start i just want to give a shout out to Dade Magwala. thank you very much uh, for the feedback we had a, a, a an hour long conversation and i was like yo i wish i was recording this so that we can just release it as a podcast. We spoke about so many things. He's a very knowledgeable person, especially in this industry uh, of fitness. And props to Tsepo Matubanya as well. We, we had a, a conversation about the podcast as well. I really, I really appreciate uh, the inputs the guys are bringing to the podcast. And, and it really helps, helps me to sh- formulate the neck the, the the episodes coming like from here going forward uh, the things i should be focusing on and what i shouldn't be focusing on and all those kind of things i really 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 appreciate that you know uh, they have opened my eyes uh, about a lot of other things that maybe could have made me to be distracted uh, going forward you know most of the times you'll find that we've started these podcasts but at some point we stopped doing them and and we don't know what was causing that but now with these conversations that i'm having i've been having with them i kind of realize why as much as we we tried so hard to to make the podcast work in our industry why did it not work you know and and i really appreciate uh, them for that can't believe it's already three minutes and I was supposed to be jumping onto the onto the meat as early as possible. Alright, let's go. Class structure. So obviously a class a class structure is the is the way is is going to be how you, you 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 structure your class, how what are the things, what are the steps or when you are doing your class why those small steps those things that are written in the manuals why are they important because do you get to take the people from inactivity to high activity and then you bring them back uh, cool them down stretch them and they leave your class feeling good unfortunately unfortunately sometimes we may misunderstand the feeling good you know a lot of us we are guilty of that of maybe going uh, 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 going extra in terms of of showmanship or in terms of making things i don't know fleshy i i also have that problem sometimes it's a problem that we have to control as instructors over and over again it has we have we don't want to hold back too much but we also don't want to go all out. We just need to find the right pace, take the people throughout until the end. And it needs focus every step of the way. You should recognize and realize where you are and you should be able to, to see that you are moving with your class. Okay. So 
I did a, a little prep here. I think it's the shortest that I've done. And, and but each of these uh, carries a lot of things that I can talk about. Class structure, the first thing is the pre-class interaction. This is when you, you just walked inside the gym. I always say, when you walk inside the gym, going towards the studios from reception, greeting, reception, the people, the cleaners, uh, the other people who don't attend the cl your class that you know inside the gym, the PTs, the staff members on the floor, like fitness, group exercise manager, to the door where you are waiting for the instructor that's teaching before you, and, and the people that are waiting for the class outside the studio, that is where pre-class interaction starts. The moment you take that card and walk inside you, the gym, your class has started. I always say that. You walk inside the gym, the class has started. Create the reception. Keep the positive mood. Keep the positive vibe. I remember LB would even say to me, at that moment, don't even answer your phone. Focus, zoom in on the class. Prepare yourself. Leave an empty space for, for the class. Don't uh, try not to clog your mind with too many things. Leave an empty space for the class. Prepare. Let when the class starts, let it find you in a state where you are ready to deliver. Cleaning, the guys who are cleaning, you meet, you talk to them, uh, you will know one another because you work in the same building. You may have names for one another, you may have jokes that you share together, but you will have a relationship. You know, you will have. I remember there was a lady, uh, was it at Eco Park? I think at Eco Park. I saw her at Caswell the other day when I was doing a fill in there. We used to call each other Finnish. Because we had, she had been at Eco Park for so long and I had been at Eco Park for so long that we considered ourselves as finisher. The people around us were changing, but we were the finisher there. And we used to lay finish and do and we'll talk, share jokes. And she was, she was, she was, she was cleaning there at Eco Park. The, those kind of relationships inside the club. And then you, you meet the fitness guys that are on duty, you're talking to them, whoever you're talking to. You get in front of the class, you start talking to the people who are there to attend your class. You have conversations. There are new people you're already talking to them. Even before you get inside the class and say anything, you can... So I remember uh, I was at Vodaworld and I outside, even before the gym opened, because the class was in the morning, I met some people that were coming to attend the class. And we started having conversations outside before we even went inside the class there was already this thing that we had built this is very important especially if you, it's not your class you're feeling in your new in the club and all those things and if it's your regular club you keep these you will have a very good relationship with the people that attend your class especially those that are always ill and then you move on to the next stage which is now pre-class instructions Pre-class instructions are very simple and they are complicated by us. You get inside the class. These are the following things that are important. Obviously, you will greet and introduce yourself. You know, there are people who don't know who you are. Hi, my name is Mzi. And then you tell people what class are they doing. Well, they saw it on the timetable, but there could be someone that doesn't know. Tell them, hey guys, my name is Mzi, we're doing kick. You know, already, you don't have to stress. We're doing kick today. What is kick? You know, you, you can decide how deep you want to go in terms of kick. Do you want to talk about it in terms of fitness? It improves cardio. If you have to do kick, it's a cardio program. That's what you benefit from kick. And then you can bring in a motivation if you want. You know, you will learn how to punch. You will learn how to, you know, I'll give you some nice new combinations of fighting. No, my kick is going to be mixed with dance. I'm going to make you punch and dance and do and have fun and, 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 and do all these things. You are preparing the people before the class starts. Now, these things, you don't really have to say them the way, but it's important that you just say them. 
you know you can say them in whatever way you can have something else that is outside what i'm saying but related whatever it is then from there there's something that's very important after motivating uh, the purpose of the class then you motivate then there's something that's very important pregnant people and injured people beginners yeah those three pregnant people injured people beginners these people are very important you just find out if there are any in the class and you give your choose you know beginners obviously if they can't continue they can remain on the regression then you have to tell them what that regression would be what whatever it is that you, you are doing in your class what is it that they should do and then pregnant people they should know that they must always have one foot on the ground and 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 also when they are doing some exercises you will give them alternatives injured people the same you understand especially knees back uh, you all you will want to give them okay look when you do such certain exercises i will give you these modifications these will be things that you had planned already before class because as you decide in your class okay this is the class that i want and then you already have your your alternative exercises for, for pregnant people injured people and regression for beginners is already there because when you build your movement you start on the regression something that anyone can do and you move towards progression right so that was class it looks like now i'm already on the class structure that was the just now pre-class instructions then after pre-class instructions you get into the warm-up which we are going to talk about a bit extensively because today's uh, uh, focus is going to be on the steps on the warm-up as well so uh, I let allow me to skip warm-up a bit because the next topic is going to be warm-up and i'm going to talk about certain things that are important in the warm-up so right here just know that after that class instructions it will be the warm-up then i'll come back and and unroll what i want to talk about the warm-up right because the video is mainly about the warm-up then you get to your class main body the main body will be what you've planned to do other people will say the combo yeah yes it's the combo and you can also have conditioning in your combo at the end of of, of the cardio if you are doing cardio box you will have conditioning at the end then you've got cool down and stretching and cool down and stretching will basically be you taking that if you did a warm up then now you do a cool down taking that heart back dropping the 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 heart rate and you stretch those muscles then you are done working now let's get inside deep inside the warm up so i made a, a couple of notes on the warm up the benefits and i also made some random points in terms of how you can structure your warm up first thing why do we do a warm up we do a warm up to prepare the body for the exercise that's coming ahead now preparing the body what does that mean the first thing that you want you want the heart rate to increase when people are walking around they walk around between I can say very fit people they walk around at 44 ppm and up to 80 ppm you know between between those I remember when I was at my fitness running 10 kilometers uh, SNDF championships my resting heart rate was 44 and up to 80 ppm now you want to take that heart rate up at least towards the 130s and 140s especially 130 right you you want to take it there but now remember there is a percentage each person they say 220 minus your age gives you almost your maximum heart rate you know and then and then you calculate a percentage uh, of that and i would say a warm-up should at least 
you should pass forty percent of your heart rate. You know this. This is where you start tapping forty percent, sixty percent, tapping into that aerobic phase. But at least over forty percent of your maximum heart rate. <laughs> I said, I got and said to me, I was like, hey, as sometimes I forget these things, and and I'm like, I didn't do a research. And he said, no, don't say you didn't do a research. Just go there and present it as it is. Whether you are sure or not sure, just say it. But do your research, Musi. Do your research. Now I'm thinking of the warm-up. I'm like, what is the perfect heart rate for the warm-up? Let me actually check. Because this is important. But I believe it can be it, it will be between 40 and 60 percent. Tate Makwala is going to hit me for this one. <laughs> But that's what a, a podcast is all about. Uh, it's all about sitting here and talking and not trying to be to be perfect and for a warm up now okay for a warm up. That is why a lot of people yeah, yeah. okay. I okay, seventy to eighty percent. 70 to 80 percent of your maximum heart rate so that's how it should take you there okay yeah so from wherever you are it should take you there 70 to 80 percent i'm happy that i actually did this right and i don't know it's a i'm just thinking 70 80 percent that's it that's work but anyway let's move on uh, yeah, see, now other sides, are, uh, they agree with me. Anyway, guys, let's leave it. Let's leave it there. Please do your own research. Comment below the perfect heart rate zone for a warm-up. Wow, I can't believe I've been an instructor for years. Yeah, ah, this one is there. Uh, yeah, look at this one now. 50 to 60 percent you see now this is where i was saying uh, it should be <laughs> anyway but you get my point it should move from that resting state into a point where you are working 130 140 ppm on your warm-up is, is is quite good all right let's move and then another thing that happens is that uh, uh, they some they call it energy release, so there are hormonal changes that happen to your body. You know, uh, remember there are the four happy hormones. I think I'll make a separate video for the for the hormones. Just you can go and check the four happy hormones. So your body now prepares itself. You start releasing those hormones. Your body prepares itself for that perception of pain. You know that you had. Okay, now we are going to work. Your body is now activating things so that you can be able to work. So we're going to talk about those things when you are talking about hormones, mainly the happy hormones. Right. And then you also have joints preparation. Uh, joints, remember joints. Uh, there are different types of joints. Maybe we'll make a day and talk about all the different types of joints. But... I'm sure everyone you've noticed, you've, you've sat down before and you actually realize that when you stand up, it's, 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 you're feeling at him, like you've been sitting for too long, it's even difficult to stand, you feel pain, that's, that, that's exactly what happens whenever our bodies, even the joints are like that. When they sit in one place, they adapt to that state. The moment you're trying to change it, it, it will first refuse. Hence, you need to take it step by step, step by step. You should try after sitting for too long in a, in a, in a bus, those who use buses, just stretch your feet before you stand, you stand up. You know, stretch your, your feet. Uh, 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 extend your knees, you know, extend the knee joint, just a couple of times. Then you stand up, you won't have that 
feeling that you, you feel that you've been sitting for too long. Right, yeah. Uh, let that synovial fluid on some on the synovial joints let it move you know let it move let the the um the ligaments and the, the especially the ligaments let them move let them move get a bit warm get a, get more elastic than you that's what the warm up does to the joints very good example is squats the first few squats will be difficult if you didn't prepare properly for squats before your class and then you've got muscle preparation which is also the muscles for them to work properly they need to be warm they need heat you know so you need to with the warm-up you are providing that heat and it helps with the elasticity as well meaning they stretch more then now when you are doing your warm-up these are things that you should consider number one it's isolation try to do joints separately warm them up separately before you start doing compound moves and then after that obviously you can now start uh, adding making compound movements after isolation and then after that you can start traveling now now another thing okay yeah let's finish so you can travel you can travel to the front you can travel to the side you can travel diagonally another thing that is important to consider is the planes of anatomy we've got only three planes of anatomy you've got the sagittal plane it will be a movement from the back to the front or from the front to the back of the body this is a sagittal move this is a sagittal move feet forward and backwards is the sagittal move meaning marching forward and marching back is a sagittal move extending your arms to the front is a sagittal move bending your waist forward and up is a sagittal move right then after that you have transverse movement so transverse cuts the body into the upper and the lower body so all the movements that are here especially a lot is going to do a lot with your core so especially those rotations you want to rotate as much as possible you know uh, those are transverse moves yeah, right they will be mainly involved here those ones and then you get uh, the last one uh, which is the coronal plane other people call it the frontal plane this one divides the body so it's the movements that will be here it's the movements that will be here it will be your your it can be your you know <coughs> i don't know what is this you i don't know what this one is called someone is it a rocking horse a rocking horse is forward and back but any movement that is here any movement that is here, any movement that is here, any movement where you take the leg to the sides, uh, 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 that's in the coronal plane. Those are your, are your abductions, uh, adductions. So it's bare, that way towards the extremities and back medial. Yeah, what we call this going to the side? It's a. Uh, um, oh man, why did I forget? Okay, this is medial, and going outside is, I forgot, can't believe I forgot. Ah, no man, I can't go without saying this. Ah, come on, someone, mind me. <laughs> medial, lateral, hey, hey man, yeah. So, lateral moves and medial moves those are on the coronal plane yeah no i'm getting rusted so that's how you deal with the planes of anatomy that's also one of the things that you should consider in your warm-up and then <clears throat> i've got something that i will call a flow of your movements this is going to be based on how your body is going to be warm the first area that will be warm in your body is going to be the core right the, the the main skeleton 
ex excluding the skull, of course, maybe. But I think the skull will also be warm because the brain has to send messages to the muscles. So it's going to be the main skeleton. The body is going to be warm first. And then it will be the extremities. So when you are working, because you know that this is already warm, I would say transverse moves make a lot of sense with shorter moves at the extremities, no leg movements. So it's starting with your transverse movements, getting get, not just transverse, but with the movements where you are working on the core a lot, you know, and then you can also do your coronal, but as long as you are working on the core more, and then from there, you can start adding your arms, working now on the upper skeleton, uh, on the upper extremities, what do they call this? Is the appendicular skeleton, the arms and the legs, starting with the arms. Now you know that you're ready here. Then now you can start adding knees and everything, you know. So from here, and then you add the arms, and then you add the knees working in that order you know that this is already warm now i can add the arms i can extend the arms now the arms are warm now i can start adding knee strikes you know uh, to warm my feet as well then there is another one which is the rehearsal pattern what are we going to do in a kick class or box class we are going to punch so you want to have punches we are going to what? Knee lift. Okay, cool. Knee lift. A kick is an extension of a knee lift. So you don't kick in the warm up. You keep it on the knee lift. Knee strikes. And then you can also create a combination. You are going to do combinations. Create a combination that is going to uh, be building blocks for, for whatever you're going to do. You know, uh, you're going to go forward, you're going to go back, you're going to go left, you're going to go right, you're going to have knees, you're going to have punches, you're going to have double knees, you're going to have double punches. In your warm-up, you can display that as a rehearsal pattern to prepare them for the combos that you're going to teach. And yes, guys, that's it. That's that's what I I I I. I Think when it comes to a warm up, that's what I've learned. That's what I know, and and definitely there are more people that maybe that have got other things that they can say, and that's the class structure in its in its skeleton form, and maybe someone else can also add on what I've said, but that's 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 that this is what makes classes to be classes, the structure of the class, not anything else. And trust me, it's, there is no combo that can make a class good. There is no CD that can make a class good without a good structure. Once you've got a good structure for your class, you can swap movements the way you want on that structure. You can place movements the way you want. You can change, bring in a new movement, bring in... But if you've got a structure, that structure is going to help you that every time you go and teach you already know that this is my structure, this is my warm-up, especially the warm-up. I always believe that the warm-up is the most difficult. That's why I, ne I don't chop and change my warm-up. I always keep it the same, you know, so that I can get that first 15 minutes, get everybody moving, get everybody warm, knowing that I'm also, as an instructor, I'm also getting myself ready to give instructions, starting with that warm-up. You build your warm-up, you finish, you know that this is my warm-up movement. Every class I'm going to teach it, this is how I'm going to teach it. I might change it here and there, but if I teach it like this, then yes. Maybe after a couple of years, you can change your warm-up. Yes, guys, and that's it, man. Um, I'm a huge believer of structures and, and, and structures nothing will beat structures and, and whatever it is that won't have a structure and it's popular i would say to an instructor right now don't don't get in leave them let whoever is doing whatever they let them do it and then um, the democracy said to me 
I should consider that, uh, remember that not everybody is my friend. So other people may not understand when I start talking like, hey, don't do whatever, uh, leave them, let them do it. It might sound as if uh, I'm flying my own flag and I'm saying other people are doing nonsense. I'm just going to take that back, I'm sorry, but I just wanted to say whatever that does not have structure is, is, is not bound to last for a long time. Not because of anything, but because when it does not have a structure, we don't know where we're going to move it from here. It ends here. And and it gets to a point where people learn and, and are able to understand fitness. And then, and then they can see, like, but, like, what's going on here? But when they go, they Google and they find what you are doing, they go and do courses and they find what you are doing, and then now it makes it... It makes more sense to them. And I believe that our people will believe in being creative and everything. But my suggestion is that let's try to be creative within the parameters. Uh, what makes that important is that we know that we've got a tested way of keeping our people healthy. And if anything happens, especially for Innistrad, if anything happens and someone decides to sue you for doing your video on YouTube, you can always say, this is what I followed when I did my video. Or this is what I followed when I did my class. And you will walk scot-free even in court. But South Africa, we don't have a culture of suing one another. It's still new. Uh, but you don't know who's going to come to your class one day and decide to sue you for injuring them. On that note, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed the, the, the class structures. I hope you got more understanding on the warm-up. If you have more understanding than what I gave, please add on the comments right there. You, you did not add A, B, C, D, E. About the other things that I had to research, especially that other one, what did I have to research? The heart rate and everything. Uh, man, this is a podcast, those things happen, and, and I'm not going to remember everything every time, and when I don't, I'll always refer, I'm not going to pretend as if I know, or I remember, and then another thing that's important is that, yes, I hope that this gives somebody something, thank you very much, episode 15, fitness podcast with Mzi, I am Mzi Mnyazi. Please subscribe and like the videos. Share it with other people. Let's move on, guys. Episode 15. I'm out. Ooh, bo, 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 bo.